Hello, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us this afternoon, afternoon if you're in the UK. Uh, really glad to have you with us. We are today joined by our friend Charlie from Architecture Unknown. They're based in Manchester and they're going to be telling us a little bit about um, the work with Wiki House that has been going on uh, in England. So just before we start, I wanted to say, as usual, we'll have questions at the end. So if you just want to put them in the chat, that's brilliant. We'll get to them at the end. Charlie's also going to be doing a demo, so I'm really looking forward to that. And um, yeah, date for your calendars. We will be having the next event at the end of April on the 27th. So hope to see you there. I'll bring Charlie. Hello. Hello. <laughs> nice Hi. to see you. How are you doing? Yeah. yeah, good. Thanks very much. Yourself? Good. Uh, thank you for joining us today. I'm going to hand over to you. Um, okay. So I'll just remove myself. And yeah, you can introduce yourself and what you guys do at Architecture Unknown. Welcome, everyone. Thanks very much for attending. Um, yeah, any any international people, please uh, give a shout out in the comments. We'd love to see uh, how far and wide this broadcast is going. Um, I'm Charlie. Uh, myself and my business partner Dan, we run uh, Architecture Unknown. We're an architect's practice. Um, we're based in Manchester in the UK. Um, and we've been using WikiHouse for about five years. It's something that is integral to our practice, into how we conceive of architecture working for the future. And, uh, and what we think is unique about it is that as community-led designers, it gives us an opportunity to bring community-led construction into reality. Uh, so I have a little presentation. I shall just share my screen. Okay. Great. Let's just go into full screen mode. Right. Okay. Uh, so yes, architecture unknown. Uh, and the picture in the background is of the biggest WikiHouse project that we've done, which is a scout hut uh, in an area of uh, Manchester, which is called Wally Range. Um, and I will be talking a bit about that, and then I'll uh, give you an insight into how we use WikiHouse, uh, what our process and reasons for it are, how we've been developing it uh, on it, for a Revit-based uh, system, which is an architectural drafting software, if you're familiar, and then also what's coming up next for us and how we think WikiHouse can develop. Uh, so our idea of architecture is that it should be for the common good. We're called Architecture Unknown because we think that architecture should be about people uh, who are not normally consulted as part of the architectural design process. So this is architecture for those who are normally unknown, uh, if you get where I'm going with that. So our aims as a practice are to engage people in the construction of their own spaces. Uh, and the reason for that is that we think that architecture is a really powerful tool um, to enable uh, communities to come together to get to know each other better to you know prevent social isolation and address the whole host of, 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 of ills that that we find and see continuously around us and um, we kind of see architecture as a really holistic bonding experience um, when used correctly uh, and we're very passionate about community-led design and also about uh, community-led construction so our aim is to put that social sustainability alongside an environmental sustainability, which we think should be the sort of base level for architectural production uh, globally, but in particular in the UK and in, in, in Western economies, this should be the only way that we do uh, architecture going forward. Um, and we think that communities have been disempowered for quite some time, and especially in the UK context have been effectively defunded. Uh, and and we think that that's a real shame because we think communities should be the heart of cities, they should be the heart of our towns, and fundamentally they, they, they should be the way in which we can relate to our neighbours in a productive and positive fashion. So we think that giving people skills and utilising existing skills to build buildings is the best way to go forward. Um, so yeah, my business partner Dan on the left-hand side at the bottom, and I, I don't think our engineer who we've worked with on all of our WikiHouse projects is here today, but uh, Ian Grindy is a legend in the field and uh, someone who I really look up to. Uh, so yeah, our practice aims. We, irrespective of the project, we try and bring uh, co-design uh, into 
our design methodology so that our clients, uh, but also the communities uh, who maybe they represent uh, or who maybe they work for, um, can become part of that brief making process especially. So we tend to try and draw a distinction between what we think of as consultation, which is where you've made decisions, you've designed the building, that building may even have you know, some form of authority permissions uh, in the UK, planning permission perhaps, um, and then you bring it to the community and say, this is what we've designed, do you like it? And that's not how we think consultation, no, that's not how we think community engagement should happen. We think that when you do it right, community engagement of any type, but especially in the early stages of the design, can bring people together to share ideas about how a building can impact and improve their lives. And often that gets over issues with nimbyism. It addresses um, problems um, of, of people feeling dislocated from their areas, especially as they change, um, which is to a certain extent inevitable. Uh, and it gives people uh, the power uh, to effectively influence an architectural project as it progresses. Once we get past that design stage and we're looking at construction, um, we've used WikiHow successfully in the past to broaden the scope and lower the threshold for communities to actually engage with the project uh, and to actually have a real hand in building something which is both cost effective uh, and also it, it brings a sense of meaning to the project early doors before it's had a chance really to embed itself. So that building is already rooted in its, uh, its community before it's even been built. And we think, as I said, this is a way towards healthy communities, places that are safe and well looked after um, and, and fundamentally better places to live. So this is the project I'm going to just show you briefly. It's a scout hut, as I said, in Wiley Range in Manchester. It is... Uh, it's quite a large building and these are our contractors. Um, this is the second Wiley Range Scout Group and uh, they are a mixture of sort of five to 17 and 18 year olds along with their assorted leaders and parents. And they came to us with the ambition to build a building together. They had heard about Wiki House, they wanted us to implement it. It was something that we had um, met with key members of their team about before. So they brought us in in the anticipation that we could deliver a Wiki House project for them, which is exactly what we did. Um, so I, I know I, for this audience, don't need to go into what a wiki house is and how it works. So this is just a few key facts about how uh, how the building uh, stacks up effectively. So it is 180 uh, five meters squared uh, with a six meter span across the primary spaces, clear span. It uses uh, effectively um, the, the older version of wiki house, which is Wren. Um, which is something that we invested quite a lot of time in, in learning how to draw in a, in a way that made sense for us as architects. Um, it, is, it took about four weeks of volunteers at the weekend uh, to complete and, about the, uh, and around about three weeks for the full construction. Um, <laughs> the prices were somewhat out of date. This project was completed in 2019-2020. Uh, um, so I've tried to give some updates to those of what it would cost then and now. Uh, but it was quite a an, an eye-opening experience and certainly something that I, would, I, I, I loved and would definitely do again. Uh, yes, so this is the process. I'm just going to flick through uh, what it looked like to build that. So at the time, using the REN system, um, the community were enabled to build the box frames uh, that are the primary structural ribs for the project. Um, but they were not able to do much more than that. Obviously, it, it was a large building, a building site. We had a contractor who was doing most of the, uh, the sort of main major construction work. We didn't feel that at the time it was something that the uh, community members, especially the younger members of the team, could do themselves. Uh, so we made quite a clear definition on our site between what was community space and what was contractor space. And there was no mixing realistically between those two, except when the contractor came over to bring a, a, a piece of the, of the frame into, into their space to construct. Uh, so the community effectively put together the frames uh, off, off adjacent to the site, not off site, it's in the same space. Um, and we sorted and built together uh, over the course of, 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 and we had about 40 volunteers uh, and felt that it was such a beneficial experience for all the young people to do. There was so much uh, opportunity for the older members of the team who had had some experience with DIY to jump in and help where they could. And, 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 and it seemed like everyone really had such a great time. Um, 
And out of that, we got an amazing building. Um, so you can sort of start to get a sense for the size of it. I mean, I know wiki houses, wiki houses have been built bigger uh, now, but at the time it felt like quite an achievement and quite a large building to build with wiki house. Um, and you can start to see the contractors in the background who were, who were responsible primarily for putting together the frame. Uh, and this is it finished. Um, it, uh, it was complete in sort of summer 2021, I think it was, when all of the last bits and pieces have been put together. And I think it was, it was really occupied from about sort of uh, early, uh, early 2021. Um, so yes, what makes us a, somewhat unique in terms of our usage of WikiHouse is that we have approached it as architects and we've tried to integrate WikiHouse fully into our system for drawing buildings. Um, so this is a sort of screen grab of the model that we made uh, of the Scout Hut. Um, and as you can see, for those who are familiar, it is effectively a, a REN system. It is ribs with interstitial pieces that you put together as you're going along. And then it's clad in, I've obviously taken off the skin here to, to show you the, the bits in the middle that are more fun. Um, so yeah, that's one of the things that we've worked harder and I'll, I've got next coming a, a sort of mini demonstration of how that looks like uh, from our side in our software. Um, but when we finished the Scout Hut, um, we had a review of how it had gone and what we had learned and what we wanted to change about uh, Ren pre-Skylark um, to make it more beneficial for the communities that we were working with to make it m easier for us and make it easier for us to draw um, and, and fundamentally to give us as architects more flexibility over how we draw wiki houses going forward. So we had three key objectives, um, maximizing the design flexibility. Um, one of our key aims was that as architects, all of our projects are fundamentally bespoke. Um, we don't have products as such. We, we do design work that responds to an intimate brief that is based, place based. Um, so for us, making sure that the design is as flexible as possible was something we were really keen to make sure was a key aspect of, of the next iteration of REN that we developed. Um, we wanted to increase the grid spacing for that reason. So we could go to 2.4 meters between uh, primary uh, ribs and but keep that separation of structure and infill so that you still had the rigidity of REN, which we find quite beneficial in, in, in making open vaulted spaces like the Scout Hut um, and the infill pieces, which fundamentally support the insulation in the walls. Um, our aim is to work with communities and bring WikiHouse into communities. Obviously, we do work with individual clients. The, the, the demo I'm going to show you is for, is for an extension to an existing house. Um, but, but when we come to working with communities, budgets are often tight. Um, any, in, any opportunity to A, increase sweat equity and, and reduce the amount of sheets and waste was something we wanted to grab at. So as I'll explain in a minute, the way that we, we use um, Revit allows us to nest each project individually to maximize the utilization on each sheet. Um, and we also developed a way for the interstitial pieces between the frames um, fundamentally these bits here, I don't know if you can see my mouse, but the bits between the frames fundamentally to be partially assembled offsite and brought together. So to speed up that contractor time, reduce cost of, for contractors on site. Um, and the third point was we want to work with contractors. We felt that for larger buildings, um, which we want to specialize in, um, working with a contractor is an inevitability. We have to make sure that this is an appropriate scheme, an appropriate uh, solution for them. Um, so from our side, making sure that the wiki house is 100% is coordinated with our architectural drawings is essential. Um, and we also wanted to do some other in, interesting things with the way that frames are joined together so that you don't have to carry such large pieces around the site. Obviously, some of these concerns have been addressed by Skylight, but we addressed them slightly differently in the, in the way we developed uh, our usage of wiki house. Uh, so live demo. Um, let's hope this goes well. I'm going to just uh, shift screens over. So just as a bit of context, um, this is the project that I'm going to show you. You can start to see the elements of the wiki house in, underneath there. Um, but it is a traditional sort of semi-detached um, 1950s house. I know it very well. It's actually my house. Um, and I'm building an extension for it as, you know, as we speak, just starting the, the construction on that um, last weekend. 
Um, we've ordered the WikiHouse frame. I'm going to show you that next. But just to give you a sense for what Revit is, I don't know, it, many people may not be familiar with it, but it's an architectural drafting software that fundamentally relies upon a 3D model. Um, what it allows us to do is to model the, the WikiHouse in 3D and then match it up against what we've drawn as architects. So you can start to see how, how the layers of this project are arranged so that they um, coordinate fundamentally with 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 what we what we know we need to do on all the other things um, to make a, a building work, uh, and that's I guess really our skill is that we can use WikiHouse um, to create architectural architecturally viable products and, and and something that we're really passionate about because it it, it gives us a, an element of one stop shop in terms of design for WikiHouse. Um, so. This is what the WikiHouse looks like under the skin, and you can start to see how we have used Revit's capabilities to, um, to make it easy for us to draw. So Revit is a fantastic organizational tool for large projects, fundamentally. And so it's got lots of tools inside it that allow us to automate uh, select parts of the WikiHouse design and you know, sort of technical drawing process. Um, so to break down this particular extension and how it works, uh, I have got the 3D of the frame. So you can start to see how that shape there coordinates with that. I've just hidden all of the, um, the cassettes, as we call them, that go between the frames. Um, so the way that we've used WikiHouse and changed it is, is to in, implement a sort of 90 degree turn in the joint so that you can do sort of lintels and spans that are, you know, oppositional to the natural way the frames are falling. Um, so you can sort of, you can see here there's three different or four different types of frame here. These L ones, a sort of straight floor beam that's just supported at either end and acts very simply in bending, and then rafters that come across here and join in uh, with, with, the, with the lintel. Uh, and they are effectively just slot connections, so they just drop onto the top of each other and are screwed down to create a, you know, that strong rigid frame that characterizes REN uh, and makes it quite a, a, a suitable solution from an architect's point because effectively the only bits of the structure that matter in terms of holding it up are the bits you can see on the screen and everything else is up for grabs in terms of what you do with it cladding-wise, um, which gives us a lot of flexibility in terms of openings, um, cladding types, whether you need a cassette there at all. Um, yes, okay, so the cassettes. So this is kind of, this is where we've really tried to push what we do. Um, the cassettes effectively drop onto little noggins that are in yellow there, you can see. Um, they have slots along the edge of the frames and the frames in the cassettes are rigid fundamentally so that you can um, pick up a cassette as a whole unit and drop it onto the wiki house in whatever position it needs to go um the top panel of the um of the cassettes is still acting as a racking panel for this and to support all the external finishes um you'll notice that in terms of efficiency we've gotten rid of the internal skin um so that and, and introduced a, a, a battening system fundamentally that uh, that runs up and down the, the the walls and roofs so that you can attach your internal finishes to that um and you can also see how Revit as a program is starting to enable me to just pull bits apart and we keep everything in, in, in the one space effectively, everything from design uh, through to uh, doing the instruction manuals. It's all through the one program. Um, so just a bit more background on the cassettes themselves. Um, some of the pieces are redundant, but we've tried in terms of they're redundant in the sense that they aren't doing anything once the cassette is in place, but are very useful to hold it together when it's in transit or even when you're just moving it around the site. Uh, so you can start to see these little blue pieces here. They are just fixing that top top uh, frame to the the sort of the boxes, the box behind. Um, and uh, so that when you pick it up with this sort of frame down, it doesn't fall apart. Our aim was fundamentally so that a community could build this interse interstitial section off-site, insulate it, and even wrap the back of it with, you know, the appropriate membrane, so that when you did come to need to uh, to join them together on-site, you're fundamentally just going to be taping that joint there and around to make sure that so that that reduces the amount of time that's spent by the contractor and increases the amount the community can invest their sweat equity in. Um, and, and from that, what Revit allows me to do 
is each of those pieces is modeled individually so I can select them and change them if I need to. Um, I can extract from that a part sheet, if you just bear with me, um, which effectively has one of each of the pieces in there laying out flat. And this is a live model. So if I were to change, for example, any of these pieces, they would be updated on this sheet as well and stay current. Um, we've got an automated tagging um, plugin for Revit that allows us to name the pieces based on what they're named as in the in the model, which helps uh, it, which help keeps us keep us coordinated, make sure that we don't end up losing bits or over, you know, naming the same piece twice, which when you're making a bespoke product every single time is, is quite a, an important aspect of the, of the way we work. Um, and then what the other thing that Revit allows us to do is it, it counts every single piece so that when we bring it into the nesting software, which we use, which is just a free uh, online based um, nesting, we can then just replicate these numbers so that uh, so that we get the right exact number of pieces at the end. Um, and then once we've done that initial nest, the product is the, the project is in construction. Uh, we then go ahead and we can create all the instruction manuals from the 3D model straight away. So we go, we can, these are these sorts of half are for the community, uh, you know, fundamentally putting together the pieces uh, of the, or we call them assemblies of the, of the project. Um, all of these are just, um, they're just effectively 3D screenshots of the model live. So if I want to, I can go in and you know move them around, for example, um, and they stay current as well with whatever the shape of each piece is, if I were to change it now, for example. Um, and you know we go as far as the cassettes, it's laid out slightly differently, but still with the aim of making sure that people can understand how to put these together offsite. Uh, and then, yeah, into how how you'd set out. This is a slightly different project. You probably noticed um, it's it's one I made earlier because I haven't made the instruction manual for my house yet. Um, but you can see that what we're aiming to do is just give a step by step guide to the contractor about how this project should go together, uh, and at every step give them the tools to fundamentally build it correctly. Um, right. I hope that was interesting. Um, so what are the strengths and weaknesses of the way that we've approached WikiHouse and the way in which we use the system? Um, starting with, with strengths, Revit has got quite a lot of parametric capabilities. I haven't really gone into those um, because I'm afraid <laughs> that it'll break on me and then I'll need to you know, fix it live. Um, but it does have quite a lot of flexibility in the sense that you can change the, 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 the sizes of pieces as long as the fundamental geometry doesn't change. Uh, quite easily. Uh, so stretching all the cassettes to different sizes and, and editing the pieces so that you can make different size cassettes is, is quite simple. The frames are slightly more difficult to draw, but still they are very flexible by you know, most modern construction standards. And this gives us a con this gives us a control over, as architects, over what is and isn't possible. So we can say to clients, listen, we can't make your circular building. Really sorry, but that's just not what WikiHouse does. But we can do quite a lot within certain parameters. And because we're in full control of the system uh, throughout every single step of it, um, we have quite a lot of opportunity to say yes to things that we might otherwise, if we were to, to, to be just sort of passive users of WikiHouse, we, we can say yes to things that normally might not have been, um, might not have been a, an option. Um, and that means that we can create really high quality products and maximize community left offsite pre-assembly um, and, and fundamentally aim to to reduce the number of sheets that we're using. So that version of WikiHouse that I've just shown you, that, that project there is, is 3.8 sheets per meter squared. We aim for four with every project. Um, it tends to work out in that sort of region. Obviously, we're enabled by the fact that there's one wall, one less wall there. There's, there's lots of things going on that you know bring that down. But we still think that it, in terms of nesting potential, it's quite efficient. Um, weaknesses. It's, a, it's quite a complex system to, to learn. We've developed it ourselves. It's relatively esoteric. It's quite hard to share because you would need a high level of Revit understanding. Uh, and also, whilst we're very happy to share the, the actual models, actually editing them doesn't just happen. You have to really know what you're doing with it. Uh, and the model complexity, as Ren, one of the key con, you know, constraints of Ren is that the model complexity is quite high. And that's one of the key benefits of Skylark. Um, Revit itself is not a free software, so it's not as open. It kind of brings 
WikiHouse into a not open source space. You know, you have to pay Autodesk for a license. Obviously, we have that anyway. It's our architectural drafting software. We would need it irrespective of whether we used WikiHouse or not. So for us, that's not too much of an issue. Uh, and maybe for other architects who are uh, who are tuning in. Um, and what we found is that some of the smaller pieces there, like the batten in battens or the small blue pieces that lock everything together on the top faces, they take more cutting time. There's less. There's more more surface less surface area for the you know edge and uh, edges um okay so what's next for us so this is our next big wiki house project uh, it's a community center in a relatively relatively deprived area of uh, salford um which is uh, in east, east manchester effect oh sorry west manchester um it's an extension of an existing building so this section here is is an existing masonry constructed building and then we are adding a significant wraparound uh, to that so you can sort of see the existing building in black lines here uh, and then the new bit that we're adding all around here it's a cafe community meeting rooms community hall a food bank and offices for the charity who are our clients it's in a park it's a fantastic setting uh, and the charity they fund they're, they're called uh, community little halton their aim is fundamentally to enable young people who are not in education employment or training um to transition from school into uh, um, into the world of work fundamentally uh, and so our aim is to use those people and give them the skills and confidence in construction sector to come onto a building site and get some experience with a contractor through this project and potentially take that up as a career um, but you can see that this is quite an architecturally uh, ambitious project um, it's a series of, of roof planes that uh, are not in that don't intersect it's a very large span for i think it's that's it's actually probably about six, five meters there across to this middle section there's a large span there between columns under the skin as i say we haven't yet started the project uh, in terms of the wiki house construction but we have worked out the geometry and we've been working with our engineer quite a lot uh, on this but you can start to see how what the evolution from what i showed you a second ago is to something that's a bit more uh, a bit more extra basically <laughs> um this is trying to take what we do as architects um to the nth degree and do something that hasn't been done before um we're really excited about what the potential for wiki house for this project is um and we're really looking forward to seeing how we can stretch ourselves and the system to bring um what is as i said quite a, a deprived area something that's both new and shiny but also absolutely embedded in the work that they do um we're ambitious but i think we'll get it done uh Thank you. Uh, I, I'm ready for questions when you are. Thank you so much, Charlie. That was amazing. Um, yeah, first question about the uh, your upcoming project. What sort of timescales are you thinking? It's a um, massive project, isn't it? Yeah, it's quite big. It's, it, I mean, the, the new bit is as big as the Scout Hut. Um, so it's, it's, it's going to be quite a large project for us. Um, exciting time scales are we've had a bit of delay on the on the contract side unfortunately just something to do with um, VAT which was has been sorted out now as far as I'm aware um, so we're halfway through the uh, architectural stage four which is RIBA stage four technical design um, and the sort of tail end of that is doing the wiki house uh, technical technical designs um, so yeah when we get started up again which should be in the next couple of weeks um, we would expect, I guess, to see it on site probably early, early autumn, I would hope, but we'll see how we get on. Oh, that's amazing. Please, please keep us um, up to date with how that's going. It sounds like, Absolutely. yeah, it's going to be such a, you know, change, you know, it's going to bring about great change to the, uh, to the project, just doubling, so, yeah. by doubling in size. the, the yeah, yeah. Um, We have a question about the, um, the version of um, WikiHouse that you're using. It seems sure. like you started off with Ren, but you've iterated it into something else. Can you tell us a little bit more about that? Uh, yeah, no, you're right. We did start off with Ren and, and, and everything went, it's, it was great about that. Um, I guess, like I said, the, the issues that we identified were that we felt that there was scope to increase the um, offsite capabilities of Ren so that all the little bits that go between the frames were part of a larger structure that could be just dragged and dropped onto uh, the site that enabled the community to build those elements uh, away from the site. Um, so that was one key thing. I guess another uh, another 
key objective was increasing the spacing on the frames. We did do some testing with our engineer on that, um, developing a, a model for doing the calculations that uh, you know that gave us the confidence to say, yeah, yeah a 2.4 meter spacing with with you sort of doubled up beams effectively at the joints between the cassettes um, would would be an effective solution for us. You know, that's that type of span. Um, um, do do you do you have you done much work with Skylark? Have you played with it or? Yeah, we have. We did. Um, we we, we unfortunately the project didn't in in the end go ahead. We have looked at uh, you know Skylark. It's very exciting. It takes. I think. It, I think that it's it's got different, very different strengths to what what we've developed and uh, and and it's but it's a fantastic system. We were working on a project which uh, was which was for um, Barrow in, in Furnace Council, um, which was on an island in the, in, off the coast, um, re, you know, extension to a, a pub to provide new camping facilities. Um, unfortunately, the council didn't go ahead with the project. We were just ready to start on site when they pulled the plug, unfortunately. But, uh, it, um, but yeah, it's, it's really exciting. And I think it, it's, it's good to see that, because as I said, the, the weaknesses of the way that we have used wiki houses that it's quite hard for us to for or for anyone well or not to be you know not to say that it's impossible but giving those pieces to someone else to try and model with in an architectural sense would be quite a challenge for us um and so, certainly something we're up for if we can find someone who's willing to take it on but um at the moment it's um it's it's a very complicated way of of doing wiki house and, and skylark has massive advantage of simplicity okay thanks for your answer we've got an answer from vincent about your extension actually so i'll just put it on the screen um so you showed uh, the lintel in the extension of your house uh do you need to do structural calculations for the permit some tests perhaps needed um we've we've done a, a couple of uh, previous uh, one you know one previous project looking at this how that would work um the calculations in the uh, we've done by the engineer. Yes, they've all been uh, signed off by them, and and the size of the beam is dictated by the calculations fundamentally. Um, for for the for our permit system, it's slightly I I don't know. There, there's there's a lot of I guess trust in it in a way because WikiHouse is quite hard from a structural engineering point to check. Um, but our engineer has produced the calculations to um to justify that size and and building control of, of seem to be fine with it so <laughs> we're okay <laughs> brilliant um another question about your extension actually so i'll just put it there on the screen it's about technical air tightness uh, do the pillars sit on a flat floor can air flow from the underfloor space into the pillars uh no no they don't yeah the inside face of the entire structure would be wrapped with a uh, with a with an airtight membrane the the whole underside of the frame we would wrap in a damp proof membrane to just protect it from any any sort of water ingress at the base it's not 100 percent sealed we're not but it, it it's it's a typical i guess timber floor in that it's got a ventilated cavity underneath that allows air to flow out and around the sides of it so that you you, you don't end up with any any moisture ingress there but, and air tightness yeah internally we handle that internally great thank you we've got another question from melchior um, do you still only do best book or are you also using the magpie system for more modular buildings like different shaped houses with the same parts, for example, and the magpie system is what you've called this iteration of rain. Is that right? Yeah, informally. Yeah. <laughs> um, I guess from our perspective, we're architects, so our skills lie in design. Um, we don't, we don't do the same we don't we're not really yet at the moment interested for ourselves in developing products but it's something that we have looked out for other people um and i know digital Wudu have recently released some uh some prototypes of 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 of, uh, of modular buildings using skylight that we've designed uh with them uh there are others as well um naked build uh company in the uk um so it's it's not something yet that we're necessarily considering doing ourselves and and probably in that respect skylark would be better suited to that sort of regimented modularity um well, the reason why we like mag why we use magpie or why we use ren as a structural system because magpie and ren structurally identical is that that separation of infill and, and column gives us a, a bit more flexibility and a bit more space between things that matter 
Thank you. Uh, I've got another question, a follow-up question from Vincent, actually. Um, for the system you created, is the spacing of 2.4 meters between the frames also possible with an extra floor or only on the ground floor? I, I wouldn't expect it to be different at the first floor, though I must admit I'm speaking without having really looked at it in any detail. We've not been asked ever to design a, a second, a two-story wiki house yet. Yet, I hope. <laughs> but I would, I would hope that, yeah, we could do that. Um, it's, it's structurally the same as far as I'm, I'm aware. Yeah. And Vincent also wants to know if it would be possible to share any SketchUp export files or IFC files. Yeah, I'd be happy to. Um, maybe yeah contact me for what, whichever project you'd like it's um it, as i say they're all kind of siloed individually we don't tend really to take one file from one project to the next mm. except for the base files that we kind of start with um so if there's a particular shape that you uh, you know shape of building you'd like the extension i'd be happy to share it as a sketch up or i have yeah. brilliant thank you uh, another question about uh, the scout's hut um, what was it like to have five, six-year-olds helping with the assembly of this hub that was going to be for them, actually? Yeah, it was brilliant. Um, we, we, we obviously, the youngest youngest kids, we left with their parents. Uh, you know, <laughs> we didn't give the five-year-olds a mallet, but, the, you know, the sort of seven, eight, nine, ten-year-olds and upwards, they were all very much involved. Um, but uh, yeah, it was fantastic. You know, the contractor and ourselves, we had m multiple experiences of kids coming, you know, looking through the fence at once it was being sort of erected and saying, oh, where did that bit that I was working on go? Or signing their names inside the cassettes. And it really did build a sense of community around that building because the original building, um, which we had to demolish, was um, had been there for 50, 60 years. And there were, you know, the scout leaders had used it when they were children as scouts in the area. It, so it, it had a lot of meaningful um, uh, you know, heritage to it, in sort of that intangible heritage um, uh, and memories associated with it. So we kind of wanted to give give that same feeling to the, the new Scout Hut by like by in, by embedding the, the the kids' memories in it at that early early stage, and hopefully they'll come back to it in fifty years' time and and have the same sorts of experiences in this as, as Scout leaders as they did as kids. Yeah, that's brilliant. Um, how um, have you been recently to see to see the building? Yeah, I mean, we 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 do go by regularly, and it, it we <laughs> and the client sends us photos from all their like, sort of get-togethers, jamborees. It's great. It's great fun to see you know barbecues or uh, you know external events going on with our building in the background because that that's kind of how we think of architecture. It's not yes. you know you do find architects who are you know all about look at me. This is my building. Look how yeah. beautiful it is. But for us, <clears throat> we love beautiful buildings, but also acknowledge the fact that architecture is the background to life, generally speaking. So yes. seeing those pictures of the clients enjoying it and, and, and the children having a good time around the building, maybe some of them who have newly joined and don't and don't don't know, <laughs> don't didn't experience that process yep. is is great. Uh, it, it's given that scout group in particular financial stability that they didn't have before mm. you know, they rent that building they use it i think three four nights a week or something like that and then rent it out for the entirety of the rest of the time so it generates income for them which gives them a long a, you know, a longevity as a as a group and as a community as a piece of the infrastructure of the community um, mm. to continue which is which is so important as well because you often do find communities setting up groups in spaces that are maybe not designed for them or not not necessarily um, where they would like to be and ending up having to be moved around. And mm. that, mo that movement, that dislocation of community groups is really hard to sustain when there, there's, there's that change in pattern. So, you know, that group has been there for 50 years. We'd love to see them there for another 100 um, in that building. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah, um, you, you've mentioned community uh, a few times in your talk, and obviously uh, WikiHouse and community fit really well. How is it that you came acro across WikiHouse? What's the, what's the story behind it for you, for you as a practice? Uh, for, for, for us as a practice, yeah, it was it was actually something that I came across in university. Um, it was a sort of central plank of my master's thesis uh, during my master's degree at, um, at, at Manchester Metropolitan. Um, it was the project that, that I designed sounds a bit weird now but it was the idea that uh, people who are experiencing street homelessness um could quite quickly come together to to build wiki houses 
that might be very small to start off with and have a space you know, allotted to them that they wouldn't need to fill at once. So you could have a, a community growing together, like starting from these little wiki house seeds, um, which would be cost effective and also you know, quite supportive for them as you know, in, in terms of helping them off the streets with no preconditions. So that was the that was the genesis of it. But moving into private practice actually is it's been able to test the ideas behind that with with the communities that we work with. Uh, it's been great to see it give so much benefit. And the, the Little Halton project is really exciting in the sense that we really want to try and make sure that out of that the kids, you know, not kids, the young adults, I should say, who we're, who we're trying to help and target with the work are really going to see the benefit for the rest of their lives. Um, and using WikiHouse and architecture in that way, I think, is, is, a, is, an, is, is, is what we think architecture has the potential to be. Yes, thank you for your answer. We've got another question here from Clayton about your extension. Um, have you had any challenges from insurance companies or mortgage lenders, or is it just viewed as a timber frame? We, we uh, yeah, hi Clayton. Yeah, no, we've not had any challenges um, in in that sense. Um, I have. I mean, we with this with this with the extension, for example, we've contacted our mortgage lender. We've told the insurers that we're building a bespoke timber frame that it will be self built. Um, we've not had any issues with that. Have we gone into the absolute detail of showing them exactly what a wiki house is and trying to explain it to them? No. Um, but that doesn't mean to say that I think that there would be any that any issue. They haven't asked any questions about it at the end of the day. So, uh, yeah. <laughs> and you you say you're um, the, the building starting pretty soon of your extension. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. Very soon. Yeah, it's exciting. Oh. Um, all, all systems go are, are at my house. <laughs> Please send us some updates. We'd love to Will see do. it. Will um, do, yeah. We just have a final comment from Vincent, actually, who is actually an uh, early stage design for a wiki scouting hut as well. He's in the Lovely. Netherlands, so he would like to have a chat with you soon, if possible. Yeah, um, so that's great. That is very relevant. Uh, but no, I just want to say thank you so much for uh, for your time and for telling us about mm -hmm. this. Obviously, there's this big, exciting project coming up, hopefully, um, in this year uh so please stay in touch uh join us again and uh yeah th thank you so much everybody for your questions if you have any more please put them underneath the chat uh, we've run out of time now but um i would love to see you on the 27th of april at our next event so thank you for joining us uh is thank there anything you else you want to say charlie uh no please uh please follow us on instagram please uh look me up on linkedin uh um, i I don't think I put my email address on there, but um, it's charlie at architectureunknown.co.uk. Give, send me an email at uh, any time. And yeah, thank you so much for everyone who's attended. Really appreciate it. We'll put your contact details under the, under the recording. Thank you so much, everyone. Bye. See you later. Bye. Bye.